I did take some film outside while I was getting the cam out and uh, the rest of the accessories. But I'll probably speed that up and get rid of the audio because it's just going to be shitty. Fuck, we might even get the wind in here for Christ's sake. Uh, so anyway, the other day when I failed to get the camshaft out because it was hanging up on the gear here which runs the uh, oil pump. Uh, I mentioned that this is probably for me the most fascinating piece of an engine. One of the things that has a proper intelligent design to it because each of these lobes is precision ground to turn rotational energy and convert that to a uh, up and down perpendicular motion and that's what lifts the valves so there would be oh sorry one here to lift the very first of the intake valves and here's the exhaust valve for that cylinder so you can see also by the offset of these lobes what the timing is like and what the uh, you know combustion routine is going to be as I was mentioned the other day, it only takes very fine thousandths of an inch in the profile of this thing to change entirely that up and down motion. Subtle, but Jesus. Fuck. Uh, very subtle, but uh, that has a, a drastic impact on uh, how the engine will work. And of course, if you're into racing, uh, you would have very specific profiles that you would want, uh, perhaps a longer duration on a intake to get more uh, air fuel in, or a shorter exhaust stroke maybe if you were going to do high RPM type stuff. Um, yeah, so there's a there's a whole black art to the uh, grinding of these. The only other cam experience uh, I have directly was with the Studebaker when we did the cam in it. And on that one, you could easily see with your eye, when you looked at the two different lobes for the various, that it was, you know, almost round and didn't have such a pronounced lobe to it. And uh, that's how you know when, uh, when the lifter has been uh, eating away at them. Uh, it'll eat away at both. They, uh, they grind each other down. They grind the little bits off. And then, of course, you don't get the duration and the lift that you want, and it'll hurt performance. Uh, <clears throat> or raw horsepower, you know, it'll, it'll, you know, it has all those effects. The engine won't run perfectly right, and, uh, you know, sometimes if they're too round, uh, you know, intake valve on that cylinder won't lift hardly at all, and then they're almost running on a seven-cylinder at that point. So anyway, yeah, this, uh, once I got those accessories off, which is, which was my thoughts yesterday, this was relatively easy to get out. There was one hang-up on one of these bearing surfaces where I couldn't get it back through the the hole it doesn't normally sit in so I had to wiggle it around a little bit but uh, and that now is a totally empty block uh, nope I'm sorry there's one more thing in there and that would be the lifters themselves I haven't uh, pulled them out yet but essentially it's down to no rotating parts whatsoever it's just down to the bare block and the uh, 12 lifters so anyway fascinated by there you can see a little bit of the gear I probably destroyed the light here by having to close the door. Now you can see that these, you know, they're only really rough on the edges, which is good because that's not where the lifter rides. So, I mean, I think I'll just put this back in. I'll, I'll, what, what, if I get some uh, calipers and some good measurement tools, I may uh, try and do some, you know, rough-ass measurements of my own just to figure out what that lift distance is and just make sure it's roughly within uh, spec. This is probably, I mean, assuming someone is making them and not just uh, resurfacing or whatever, you know. Well, actually, it's hard to resurface these anyway, but um, it's probably a f three or $400 part anyway. I haven't really looked that up yet. But uh, if it's not totally brutal, um, I might just uh, use it again. Not sure what this one is, but if I had to guess, it probably runs the um, fuel pump. And that one is a little bit. How you doing? Yeah. Anyway, I'll do some more, a little bit more scientific examination of this once I get some good uh, 
uh, measuring tools that I can trust. I have a set of, uh, you know, Bernie calipers and all that, but they're just, they're shit, they're power fist. So, uh, I'll try and uh, splurge on a couple of nice tools to uh, measure the bores, measure all the cylinder bores. Uh, we're looking for taper there, or we're looking for no taper, or little taper. And measure that ri uh, ring ridge, which there's not too much you can do about unless you're going to bore out the engine, and get it right again. Um, if it's roughly, if those bores are roughly good and concentric, then I will, um, I will probably just hone them lightly. So anyway, yes, people, that finally came out. This is the prize. This is certainly one of the money shots for that engine, and uh, I'm fascinated by it. It's just. Um, you know, it's it's a marvel. Thought about hundreds of years ago, but you know, concentric cams have been used in all kinds of machinery going back hundreds of years. Certainly for anything uh, the mechanical age. Um. Yeah, no, it's 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 fascinating as fuck. I suggest uh, anybody who's even partially interested go go check out some of the manufacturers. Comp cams is a big one, and uh, they got some really cool videos on uh, the. The machine they used to grind these. I would imagine now, um, you know, even comp camps gone to CNC, you know, fully, you know, just you put a, you put a block of metal in there and it, the machine does all this, right? It used to be done by hand, but, or, you know, human operated. All right, uh, that's kind of it for now. I'll see what we got today for a video, but uh, thanks for watching and uh, follow along and we're just about uh, well, we're pretty much done with the whole disassembly side of things. Alright, thanks for watching. Talk soon. Bye.